I said last week I'm going to deal with the issue of Jewish identity and the question of whether you're a nation or a religion. Okay. People like to throw out this question. Are we a nation or a religion? We're both. And it's like the simple answer, we're both. Like, you know, like, we're a nation and a religion, and that's who we are, and it's like a nice simple answer. What people don't want to face is the problem with, the que with, with, with that idea of saying that we're a nation and a religion. You don't understand the problem. You don't understand the issue. What, what, what exactly are you dealing with? And in many ways, this is a tremendous problem within the Jewish world nowadays because there's so many questions of Jewish identity and Jewish unity and I hear people talking about it, and they don't even know the ba they, uh, uh, they they don't even understand what the problem is. Everyone thinks they have a a Jewish answer. There there was some there was a um, some ads pro uh, sponsored by the American Jewish Committee. I think in the 90s it might have been 90s, maybe really part of this this uh, this millennia, where people. Wrote, wrote ads because they're trying to deal with Jewish identity and they said they had these ads of what different people feel being Jewish is about so they spoke about this guy and said this is this is this is why I'm Jewish or this is why I feel that I'm Jewish and so forth and they felt these are answers okay I'm Jewish for this reason I'm Jewish so the problem is they didn't deal with the issue they, they basically said the person felt a certain way and called it Jewish and that's what makes me Jewish. Why is that an answer to the problem? The problem is not why you feel Jewish or you want to identify as Jewish. The question is what does this term mean and why does it connect me with other people who use this term? Um, and, and, and there's no attempt to try and say what does this term mean? Um, Okay, so everyone likes throwing out ideas. My, you know, religion, nation, we're both, and, and so simple we can answer it. But what is the really problem? The problem is, is that the term Jewish reflects a group identity. It's basically saying that there is a group of individuals which we are going to identify as the Jewish group or is identified as the Jewish group which implies some type of connection between people within this group it's a group definition it means it means I'm a member of this group if you're a member of this hockey team it means you're a member of the hockey team okay? so if you say you, 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 you know when you, when you give that kind of definition you basically say I'm a member of a group when you are a, a um, when you say you're a Jew, you're saying I'm a member of a group called the Jewish group. Now, what does that group mean? It implies some connection between the members of the group. So, what is that connection? So, if I throw an answer, and this is where you get into the problem of saying we're a religion and we're a nation. If you sit there and say, here's a group, group of this group over here and to be a member of this group there's one way you know it, w what does it mean to be a member of this group it means you like to play tennis or um, or you uh, um, eat hamburgers okay here's a group and membership of this group means you like playing tennis or you eat hamburgers you could play tennis and eat hamburgers and be a member of the group, but if you only eat hamburgers and wouldn't go close to a tennis racket, you're still a member of that group. And if you play tennis but you're a vegetarian, you're also a member of this group. So if I put you in the same room with you, the vegetarian tennis player, and over here, the 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 um, which hamburger eating hamburg to, actions, uh, yeah. to this group but if I put you in the room together and say here's two members of the group okay this member of the group who never touch meat doesn't eat hamburgers on principle and plays but plays tennis and over here 
here, this member of the group is someone who eats hamburgers but would never go on to a tennis court. If I put them in the room and say, this is the nature of the group, you sit there and say, what kind of group is this? Why are these two people in the same group? One is one thing and one is another thing. So why are they in the same group? Now the truth is, is that's usually the problem with Jewish identity in our world today. We have people sit and say, it's a religion, it's a nation, it's both. But the point of the matter is, is, is that no one is sitting there and saying, like, people are, are struggling with, well, well, religion is one type of definition. Nation is another type of definition, or it could be an ethnic grouping, right? The fact of the matter is, is one doesn't have anything to do with the other. Religion is a definition based upon certain theology. So if you're a group based upon similarity, and, uh, similar, some theological similarity, then that's fine. That's a group based upon, upon theological similarity. Fine. If you sit there and say it's based upon ethnic grouping, okay, some, some ethnic identity, that's a different type of group. But if you sit there and say it's based upon ethnic identity, it doesn't matter what you think theologically, or it's based upon theology and it doesn't matter what the ethnic group is, how does that work? And if somehow you say it's somehow kinetic, it, it, connected, it's ethnic and theology, how does that work? It's two different, two different factors. So the problem that exists in Jewish identity is that the base core understanding of, 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 of the identity is really unclear. Um, you can have a person, if a person says they're Jewish but doesn't believe in God, what are you saying about their identity? What are they saying about their identity? They're saying their identity is ethnic. It has nothing to do with religion. Okay. The fact is, is, is that that's, that's, there are groups that are only ethnic groups, not dependent upon religion. Therefore, religion shouldn't be a factor in that dependence, in, the, in that definition, because atheists can be part of the group. But then you have an interesting thing within the Jewish world. You have a Jewish atheist. Yeah, so how, how is that possible? So therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, it's a theological belief is not a fact. When you say Jewish atheist, what are you saying about the term Jewish? How are you defining the group? Saying the group does not mean anything theologically. It's not a theological definition. You can't sit there and say a person is, is, is Jewish because they're a theology. You're saying that they're Jewish. It doesn't matter what they think. So you're saying it's an ethnic identity. Right? Okay. Fine. It has nothing to do with, with, it's nothing to do with theology. Most people would sit there and say, no, wait a second. Judaism is a religion. So it has to have theology. So how do you have atheist Jews? Now, the truth of the matter is, I'm not the only person who says that. The fact is, is that they've done some stuff in the States with, with, with questionnaires about Jewish identity. And one of the things that's extremely surprising to many, to many uh, non-Jews is how is it possible to have an atheist Jew? Jews are religion. Why? So, beca th th because these people are saying, we understand Judaism to be a religion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Certain like food. I, I, but like across the bar, I don't think people recognize Jewish person just because of like no, no what, how you, religious they wait, are. Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Just that we're are. talking, we're talking about the definition of the group. We're not talking about how religious someone is. We're not talking. About, we're talking about the definition of the group. And this is not done with any type of 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 um, of evaluation. Yeah. Okay. When you tell me a person can be a Jew and an atheist, what are you telling me about the definition yeah. of that identity? You're telling me it's an ethnic identity. That's what you're telling me. That's, you're telling me that it's not based in theology. Right. If a person says they're a Catholic, if or, or let me give you another example. If a person came up and said, I'm a Muslim, but I don't think Muhammad was a prophet. 
You sit there and say, what kind of Muslim are you? Okay, Muslim means you believe in a certain theology. That theology believes that Muhammad is a prophet. So, what do you mean you're a Muslim? Or if a person says, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in, Je but 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 I I don't even you know I have no understanding I, I I don't believe in Jesus. So then, what does that mean? The definition of the term is theological. It means you have a certain theology. And now you're telling me I, I'm this, but I don't have that theology. Person a person a person saying, hi. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm a mathematician, but I have no understanding of, uh, of arithmetic. Or, or a, person sits, a person sits there and says, um, um, you know, um, I'm a member of any group, but whatever way you define that group, I'm, I, I have no knowledge of it. Yeah. Okay? That's, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying that when a, when a person says they're an atheist Jew, Okay, They're be I'm not questioning that. I'm saying what you're saying is Jew is not a theological definition. That's what you're saying. Okay, that's it. It's an ethnic, and therefore it's an ethnic identity or whatever it is. Okay, but it's nothing to do with theology. That's what you're saying. Okay, it seems to be that's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, and people walk around and say there are atheist Jews. So then how do you understand the nature of the group? Now, th that's just in the general world. Other people would sit there and say, but on the other hand, if you say you're Jewish but you believe in Jesus, most Jews would sit there and say, well, i got a problem with that. Because Jews have a certain theology. Right? If a person says, I'm Jewish but I'm a Muslim, I said, wait a second, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that definition. Okay? Because there's a theological aspect to being Jewish. Okay? So what's the theological aspect? Now, the truth is, the reason it gets complicated is because even as I say this, you sit there, you're already sitting there saying, but it's possible for a person to be Jewish and and and, and, and a Christian. The, 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 the previous... Uh, um, what do you call it? Um, they take on these acts and but the fact priest, no, no, they could I, be a priest, no, you know? but they're still uh, Jewish. But they're still Jewish. Why? 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 Why are they still Jewish? Else. No, the, no, no, no. The fact is, is you take the, you take um, the uh, for the former cardinal who is the Archbishop of Paris. He's Jewish, right? Because he was born Jewish. My. my the fact is, is what I'm getting at is, yes, it is actually possible for a person to be Jewish and a Christian. The problem is, how do you deal with it? What does it say about the identity? So you're saying, and then you turn around and say, yes, but Jewish is a theological statement. So how could a person be Jewish as a theological statement and you're not comfortable with it? We struggle with this. This was the struggle of the Brother Daniel case in, in, in Israel. It's one of the problems with Jews for Jesus, for example, because Jews for Jesus basically, I'm Jewish. People will say, well, they're not really Jewish. They say they're Jewish, but they're not even born Jewish. Well, but there are people. The founder of Jews for Jesus, Moshe Rosen, was a, was theoretically born to a Jew. What I understand was born to a Jewish mother. So how often they made him Jewish? But then he believed, oh no, but he can't be Jewish. He believes in Jesus. Well, we're not comfortable with, his, with, with him defining himself as Jewish. Well, how do you understand it? Brother Daniel, when he came to uh, the Brother Daniel case in Israel, we, Israel made, to, made a decision that as a Jewish state, they were not going to take in, um, uh, they were not going to let Brother Daniel use the law of return and define himself Jewish pursuant to Israeli law, right? Which really was a movement away from halacha because he was born to a Jewish mother. But the point is, is that's because most Jews weren't comfortable with a, with a, with a, a monk calling himself Jewish as a member of the group. Now it's, yeah, he's sort of a member of the group, but he's not really a member of the group, but he is a member of the... I mean, I mean we throw this around. We're born to a Jewish mother. Well, the real, what's the real problem? Now, the truth is, is that there's a problem colloquial among people, but the fact is the problem is inherited in the halacha. When halacha says you're born to a Jewish mother... You're Jewish, right? That's an ethnic definition, right? 
It's a national definition. Who you're born to. Okay? It could be you're born to. Like I'm, I'm reading something today. About, uh, I, I read something yesterday. I mean, ethnicity about could also be, oh, that person's Brazilian because they're born in Brazil. Exactly. And it has nothing to do with theology. It has absolutely nothing to do with theology. It's exactly right. I read somewhere yesterday that, 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 that LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, the President of the United States, th th there's arguments that his mother's mother's mother, right, were, were, was actually Jewish. So he was actually Jewish. So here's Lyndon Baines Johnson who in no way identified theolo theologically with, the Jew with, with Judaism, he's Jewish. Well, it's an ethnic identity. The difference okay. is you don't have to be born in Israel to be Jewish. That's, that's, that's nothing to do with that. But the fact but is... It's like born if you look at other ethnicities, they're that because they were born there. Right. Yeah. Or, 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 or you're born to... parent that was born there. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, right. The fact of the matter is, is that's as what's his then name? That makes him only partially. Uh, well, no, no, you're, no, 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 the, like no. You're you're full. It's what's his name? Like uh, what's his name? Cruz. He's a naturally born U.S. citizen. Why? Because he was born to an American citizen. His mother was an American citizen. The fact of the matter is, it's national identity. But the but 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 the point is, is, is yes. Then what does theology have to do with it? And by the way, that happens to be Jews for Jesus' argument. And and by the way, the, the, there there were there's a book that was written. Wait, is he the one that's? Well, he's born one born in Canada, Canada right? Oh, okay. So there's that means a, he's partially Canadian too. He's, he's both. both. He's both. So it's, it's a, not it's partial. Not like it's fully. It's not. American. It's no, 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 no. It's You're it's full. fully American, fully Canadian. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's his American, argument. Fully it's it's it's. Two, 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 and one. You know, the fact is. But let me give you an example of this. Of this. Of this. Uh, um, th this is the argument of Jews, of Jews for Jews. And by the way, there, there was a book written. It was written by a reform rabbi in 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 um, I think Wales, who basically argues that Jews for Jesus should be part of the Jewish community. Um, and it was it was actually preceded by another book written by a Reconstructionist rabbi in Philadelphia, who raised the issue: if Jewishness is defined by ethnic identity, why should if if someone's if it's defined by ethnic identity, you're born to a Jewish mother, then why shouldn't Jews for Jesus be Jews? It's an ethnic identity. It's nothing to do with theology. If you have atheist Jews, where Jews basically say, I'm Jewish even though I don't believe in anything, so it tells you theology shouldn't matter in terms of your Jewish identity. So Israel came up with an answer in the Brother Daniel case that you can't, you can't, be, you can't believe in Christianity and, and be part of Jewish. My own personal take on that has a lot to do with the fact that it's because Christianity persecuted, persecuted Jews because Jews were perceived to be an eth a, a religious grouping throughout the Middle Ages. But the fact is you take people, there are Jews who are practicing Buddhists, and the fact that they say they're Jews, no one gets upset. We have a term for them. We call them jew huh. right? Right? And, 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 and you'll see, if, if you go into, um, well, there was one time I walked into a bookstore, a chapters or whatever, in the Jewish section. You would never find a book in the, a book there about about Jews for Jesus or something like that. But I remember seeing a whole bunch of books about Jews who were Buddhists or yeah. something like that because that yeah. didn't that didn't it's not that bothering that doesn't bother our Jewishness. But the point is, is that w w but the bottom line well, is though is is that if you're saying if, if 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 in other words, if Jewishness has something to do with theology. Then you can't just, you, 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 in other words, then it's very, if, 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 what is this theology that says it's okay to be a, uh, an atheist theologically? Uh, in other words, what I'm getting at is, is that we're looking at this group and we're trying to find the nature of this group. Yeah. The truth is, is where I started from, where I introduced was the halachic definition of born to a Jewish mother, seems to say this group is ethnic. It's born to a Jewish mother. 
And therefore, when you have it that, when you say that the cardinal in Paris was Jewish, you're basically saying it's an ethnic identity. Okay? So good, so it's an ethnic identity. So then, why is it, but on the other hand, it's a theological identity. Because we, look, we talk about the term Judaism as a religion. We talk about Jews as a religion. Now, the truth is, is we also find that in the halacha. If someone wants to become Jewish, right, they have to ha make a theological statement. Pursuant to halacha, you have to make a th theological s statement of accepting the mitzvot. So the point is, is you're saying that if you're born Jewish, it's an ethnic identity. But if you want to become Jewish, it becomes a theological identity. Okay, if you want to convert to Jew, if you want to become Jewish, you have to make a theological statement, pursuant to halacha, to accept Torah, and you're going to follow the mitzvot. Right? That's, that, that's, that, that would seem to be the prima facie halachic standard, which means that the nature of this group is theological. Why, why is it that I have to accept t Torah mitzvahs? Because that's what it means to be Jewish. Oh, so it's a theological definition. Okay? It should say it then say this is the group of people who follow Torah and Mitzvah. On the other hand, you have another halachic definition, which is born to a Jewish mother. Which means even if a person doesn't have a theological definition, they are they are they are um they are they are uh, um, they are Jewish. Right? So what is it? Is it an ethnic identity? So if you're born Jewish, you're part of this group. And if you have this belief, you're part of this group. Seems to me it's a two different... What? The, the, it seems to me that the problem or the issue that people are having is based really upon what way they grew up. They could grow up a certain amount knowing about Judaism. No, 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 you're, you're, no, no, you're, 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 no, no, you're, you're getting into, you're getting into That's how, no, uh, this is right? in the halacha. This is in the halacha. This individual... But that's where right? people have a problem with No, it. but, but the, the problem is, is, it seems to me the halacha is presenting, here's a group, okay? If you're born to a Jewish mother, you're part of this group. And then, whatever you do, whether you, whether you go to church or not, you're still part of this group. Okay? You, right? You're still Jewish. On the other hand, if you want to become part of this group, right? And you, and, and you can be... Afro-American, you can be Chinese, you can, you can have any ethnic identity, but you can be part of this group, and the reason you become part of this group is if you accept the theology of Orthodox Judaism. That's the halakhic definition. So what's in this group? So you have one, it's the same case I gave you beforehand between the that's tennis what players. The halakhic definition? Yeah, the, the, the halakhic, the, that's, that's for a convert. The whole, that's what I'm trying to say, the, the definition in that's of the conflict. nature of the of the group is that just for everyone. But that's the Same point. For everyone. Okay. The point is, what's the nature of this group? The group says, here's this group. Here's a group called Jewish. Are you a member of this group or not? Or what defines you as a member of a group? If you're born to a Jewish mother, you're a member of the group. You're a member of this group. I mean, yeah, like, I'm just trying to think of what a convert has to do. They basically just wait, have wait, to wait, no, 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 no. You have to get to whatever, whatever they have to do, whatever he has to do, because the convert has to say, I believe in Torah and Sinai. And that I'll do all these things. Well, for, uh, no, the point statement. is he has to make a theological statement. The fact is, is a person born Jewish, born to a Jewish mother, is defined as a member of this group, Regardless of what theological that's statement he what makes, he has to believe that that's no. the number one thing that uh, that's the only thing. What's the definition because, of a Jewish because mother? Because like, it, I don't think anyone could really truly what? say that. Like, uh, what commit to saying, oh, I am uh, from Moshe, like. Um, no, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. You're getting too cut up on on on. I'm getting on very the, particular. No, like you're on the conversion specific. issue. The, the, what the convert has to do is no, no, it doesn't matter right now. That's why I'm trying to get more basic. You have two definitions of the group. Not, let's not deal with the details of the definition of the group. This definition of the group is defined totally 
but are you born to a Jewish mother? If you're born to a Jewish mother, okay, then you are a member of this group. It doesn't matter what you think. That's not theology. That's, that's, that's not theology. That's, that's, that's right. Ethnicity. It doesn't right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. On the other on the other hand, if you want to become a member of this group, okay, and I'm not going to get into the it's details. What you're looking at of, of of the details is, if you want to become a member of this group. You have to have a certain theological perspective, pursuant to Allah. What that perspective is in details, I'm not dealing with. I'm dealing with the simple nature of the problem. This person born to a Jewish mother does not have to make a halachic, um, a, a, a theological statement. This person, to become a member of this group, has to make a theological statement. Now, the point is, is you contradictory a little bit. Exactly. So the fact of the matter is, that's why I gave you the case before, and between the tennis player and eating hamburgers. This member of the group plays tennis. I mean, that the, works only for converts. No, wait a sec. Wait that, a sec. No, no. Concept. No, no, no. The point is, it's talking about the nature of the group. Okay, it's talking about the nature of the group. The group is 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 that is that okay. is that. Am I worried? I'm saying. I'm saying the reason that you say a convert groups are saying and they work different. No, the fact is, is what I'm saying is, is, is that this group has said if you want to become a member of this group, you have to you have to accept, um, you have to make a theo a certain you have to have a certain theology. It tells me the nature of this group. This group, in other words, it seems to be if I go up to you and I sit there and say, hey, listen, I have a group. In order to be a member of this group, you have to make a certain statement yeah okay uh, of what you believe so then what you're saying is is that's the nature of the group the group is a, is a group of people who share a common theology okay fine then comes the issue like this on the other hand right here's another definition of the group that says you become a member of the group if you're born into the group or born to a Jewish mother and then you don't have to make any theological statement well wh wh what's this group then on one hand, this on one hand the group is defined over here by making a statement. Yeah. On the other hand, the group is defined as nothing to do with the all with, with the statement. So what's the nature of the group? So there's some part of the nature of the group is 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 this says the group is ethnic, and this statement says the group is 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 theological. Now the point is is then you get into a greater a greater issue. Where, 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 where it becomes m more problematic because Jews are dealing with that. The truth is, is that this issue between theology and nation has actually been a historical issue. Uh, the early Zionists basically said, it's, we're, we're a nation. We're an ethnic group. We're a nation. Okay? And they didn't really care about theology. They, didn't, they said, listen, we don't care what you do religiously. Because the definition of Jewish is nationalism. It's being a nation. Mm -hmm. Okay? On the other hand, the early so reform movement... then, when they would accept converts, they, no, the, the, it would the, work differently. They wouldn't use the word they converts. Don't, they don't even have they, that. They don't have that. The fact of the uh, matter is, they is they may have some groups. other definition. Now, the truth is you may look at national identity and say, listen, what's necessary for someone to become a member of a national group? Such as immigration. What do you need to become a Canadian citizen? In other words, if you're born to a, to, to, to a Canadian citizen, you're, you're a citizen. What what do you need to do? So then there certain would be so certain some sort of oath, also right, to the nation. But 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 if you come to Can if you come to no but 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 if you come to Canada, you don't ask your theology. Jews became Canadian citizens. Muslims become Canadian citizens. It's not a theological definition. Mm -hmm. But it's a national definition. So, so if you say that that becoming a member of the Jewish, if you say it's a na Jewish national grouping, then a Jewish national grouping may have ways of saying, "Listen, we'll let people into our nationhood." But then you'd have to meet the standards of what it means to become part of this nation. But you wouldn't have. But why do you have to believe? Why do you have to have theological statements? The halakha throws out this idea you need theological statements if you want to become part of this group. But if you're born to, within this group, 
right? And you don't abide by those theological statements, you're still a member of, group, of the group. The point is, it seems to be that this group is not clear what the nature of this group is. Is it a nation or is it religion? So the national identity of born to a Jewish mother would seem to say we're a nation. But the but the but the convert the halachic the gerus definition the, the 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 conversion definition, which begins with the person saying, "I will abide by God's mitzvot," or or or, or some theological acceptance of belief in God or whatever, would seem to imply that it's it's a theological statement. Mm -hmm. So what's the nature of this group? And the fact is, is most people don't even understand the problem. Now it gets even more complicated because most people then don't even want to deal with the theological differences within our group. Like for example, um, Reform Judaism and Orthodox Judaism have major theological disagreements. If we think in terms of Christianity... This, do they consider the same thing? No, they don't. No, in, in who's the in definition of a Jewish person, the, nation? No, no, They no. have different, different the, ideas. The truth of the matter is, is Reform Judaism back in Germany defined themselves as a religion and not a nation. They were very much against Zionism. The early reform movement was very much against Zionism because it wasn't in that, because we're not a nation, we're a religion. We're a religion that believes a certain religion called Reform Judaism. Now, in certain ways, it's, it's, it's similar, you see, in certain ways, you look at distinctions between... Let's That's see, with strange though, because it would seem somewhat more... Uh, like... Um, connected to the world, like a reform, or like they're more, it seems less connected to... Okay, yeah, I'm going back to the... I, I, no, they, no. Would, they would consider no. as a nation, the because early that makes more sense no, logically. No, the fact of the matter is, is this was a major argument in the 1800s, mm -hmm. okay, as they broke away from orthodoxy, right. as people broke away from orthodoxy. One of the issues was, are we a nation or are we a religion? Reform Judaism said we're a religion, and therefore they rejected any of the national, um, any of the national perspectives within Judaism. Therefore, they rejected the idea that we're going to go back as a nation to Israel. Seems opposite for what they said. No, no, no. Th I'm talking about back then in the 1800s. Oh, Reform so Judaism. Yeah. Reformed. Reform Judaism basically argued we're a nation. Um, uh, sorry, we're a religion. Okay, and they define, define themselves theologically. If you wanted to convert to Reform Judaism, you had to accept the theology of being Jewish. Now, that's also a reason why Reform Judaism. A lot of people don't recognize this, but the Reform Jewish position now it's it, different. If you want to be Reform. No, no. The fact of the matter is, is you still have to see some basis. Theology. The reason, the re, like for example, Reform Judaism argued for matrilineal descent back in the in the 80s they said you for, they, sorry for patrilineal descent they said you can be born to a to a um, people don't recognize this about reform Judaism they said you can be born to a Jewish father and you're still Jewish right okay and there was in other words reform Judaism had a major statement in the, the 80s old way. we actually originally were like that no no that that don't go, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> that don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there because that's that's misleading. No. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very misleading. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's very misleading. The fact is, is reform, but th that's not what Reform Judaism really believes. Oh, I spoke okay. to a Reform rabbi. They don't about like this. trying to do it because no, that's what we no, originally did no, because when Reform rabbi, I spoke to a Reform rabbi about it. He was very honest about it. He said, "What was the real basis of patrilineal descent?" the whole argument of patrilineal he says Do you th this was an older reform rabbi he says if someone was born to a a non-Jewish mother but a Jewish father and was in my temple what do you think I did you think you think I treated her treated the child any different than any other member of the temple at the confirmation ceremony we called it a conversion also but what he really ended up telling me was you know something 
what we really believe is that you think if someone is born to a Jewish father or born to a Jewish mother that's what we really care about what does that have to do with a person's Jewishness what he basically said if a person was brought up Jewish and and they weren't we, actually and we didn't and we didn't we didn't if a person if a ki person was brought up Jewish yeah. we wouldn't look to whether the mother was Jewish or the father was Jewish mm -hmm. we'd say he's a Jew that's it person is a Jew on the other hand he also pointed out to me that that a person who was born to a Jewish mother who then adopted another religion basically he would say was not Jewish mm. or was brought up under another religion was not Jewish he said it's 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 what you believe that defines you as a Jew not, not when you're born not who you're born to it's your belief now the starting point is if you're born to Jewish parents and you're brought up Jewish you'll be Jewish but really it's the fact that you're brought up Jewish that makes you Jewish it's your belief it's not an ethnic identity it's a religious identity on the other hand the ethnic identity is who you're born to now the truth is is that I would think in a, in a, in a, in a you know that that when you ask David, when they asked David Ben Gurion about who's a Jew his original idea was not was not um, um, Geras Kahalacha, not born to. A, he, he says you're a Jew if you're born to a Jewish mother. Well, yeah, I'm fine. But he basically say his basic real position was, if you consider yourself a Jew, you're a Jew. He was basically saying that it's an ethnic group. If you think you're part of this ethnic group, you're part of the ethnic group. I don't care what you believe. That was his definition. The point is, is, is that it's a national identity or is it a religious identity? The fact is, is most Jews don't even know how to deal with this problem. Now, for a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are atheists who go to Shul and Yom Kippur. And the reason they go to Shul and Yom Kippur is because they understand their national identity to be expressed through certain religious activities. Our national identity. That's the way they brought up. So they. This but it's their national identity. They go to Shul and Yom Kippur not because they really believe in Yom Kippur and stuff like that. They go because that's what Jews do. It's the na it's yeah. it's the expression of the national identity, not necessarily because I, I believe someone this. Who's conservative or brought up conservative, I'd say, or maybe traditional, and they think that way that. That because it's not theological. It's now the, the other issue, the other insights. But even as people talk about conservative and reform, what a lot of people don't do with conservative and reform is deal with the theological distinctions. Like in Christianity, there is Roman Catholicism, Greek Orthodox, Methodist, Mormon. Right? We have all these different, and we all understand them to be a different theology. If you sit there and said, "I want to go speak to." this minister, a Southern Baptist minister about his beliefs, then I went to go speak to uh, a Methodist about his beliefs, then I went to go speak to a to a Catholic about his beliefs, she'd sit there and say, I understand the beliefs would be all different. Yeah. Okay? Jews, if you go to a Reform rabbi, you're going to get a different, a different viewpoint than if you go to an Orthodox rabbi. Do they understand that you're talking two different religions? You're talking, and this isn't critique, the fact that matters, Reform Judaism has a different theological base than Orthodox Judaism. But no, Jew, most Jews, a the rabbi is a rabbi. But yet, to, uh, but the same, within the same nation. Ah, right. The fact of the matter is, is the reason people don't want to address the fact that you're talking about two different theological structures within, 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 within is because we're concerned that the recognition of these theological distinctions will cause problems to Jewish unity. My personal viewpoint is it causes more problems by not, by not being honest about it. But the fact is, is, is that in Christianity there are different branches of the religion. And therefore everyone understands these theological distinctions between the different groups. So, so if I wanted to know what Catholicism believes, I wouldn't go ask the Methodist what does Catholicism believe. But Jews, I asked this rabbi, and he said this. So this is what Judaism believes. But the rabbi he went to was a reform rabbi, who this guy doesn't, who, who, who does not express a viewpoint of Orthodox Judaism. Or the rabbi he went to was an Orthodox rabbi, who didn't express the concepts of Reform Judaism. 
and 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 Jews don't get it. There there are different, but, but the, and the reason Jews sidestep the issue is because we don't want to confront the fact that there are major theological distinctions within our group. Why? Because we want to be one nation. Therefore, we want to be one nation. That's the made focus. By so then, the, but, you don't but think the, about the, the, uh, them as different. And religions. therefore, what occurs is a lack of understanding, which causes even bigger problems. Because then, because then Jews don't understand the distinctions. Mm. When I talk to someone, I, I mean, I mean, I'll talk. You know, a person comes to me. I said, I sit there and say, listen. You know, like, like. I, I tell the story a lot. There's someone. Um, told me he went to a class by a um, reform rabbi and at the class the question was who are the two major philo Jewish philosophers of the 20th century? Okay, so who are the two most significant Jewish philosophers of the 20th century? So this, refor this reform rabbi said Franz Rosenzweig and Martin Buber. Okay, you ever, guys ever heard those names before? Buber. What? Boober. Boober. You don't know. You've never heard of Rosenzweig. Okay? Hmm. Boober. Okay. Yeah, I heard okay. Of Boober. So what? You've heard of Boober also? You have never heard of Rosenzweig. Okay. It's interesting because Rosenzweig most likely was bigger than Boober, but that's beside the point. That's, <laughs> among academics, it might be that they would argue that, that Rosenzweig. But the truth is, this is what one rabbi said that, 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 that the two major philosophical Jewish philosophers of the 20th century was Franz Rosenzweig and Martin Boober. Okay. So, so this guy, so, so, um, I think the 20th century, or it might be the late 19th century or whatever, I'm not sure when, when, when Rosenzweig died, died young. Um, anyways, so, uh, um, he, uh, so, so I said, so I said to him, you know, if you went over to the Kuddle, you, you went to the Kuddle and said, hey, do you guys know who Franz Rosenzweig and Martin Buber are, mm. right? The, the yeah. guy who's who's learning the kol sits and say, no, Martin Buber, is that Moish Buber the the shoichet? <laughs> no, the fact is, is yeah, that yeah. is that so a person makes a joke or a, you don't get it. Right. To reform rabbis, the fact that Orthodox rabbis are rabbis and don't know who Franz Rosenzweig and Martin Buber are. It's ridiculous to them. How could that person be a rabbi without knowing who Franz Rosenzweig is? How could you be a rabbi without having this knowledge? Because in his religion, the religion of Reform Judaism, Rosenzweig is significant. The truth of the matter is, Rosenzweig was was actually a uh, towards the end of his life he was actually a a, a Beltruva, um, to a large extent. Anyways, but the point but the point is is because. The fact is, is that that's that religion. Reformed Judaism is a different theological structure and therefore teaches a different theology than what you have in yeshivas. And then yeshiva people come and make jokes about how can a person reform rabbi? He doesn't even know what your day is, which he needs to get smicha, right? Well, he's a rabbi, he doesn't even know what your day is. That's right, because pursuant to the religion of Reformed Judaism, knowing your day may not be that important because they're two different theological structures. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean I'm, I'm crediting it, that doesn't mean I'm, ex I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this is, this is good, I'm saying that it's the reality, right. okay? Just and therefore, and therefore, and or bad or right, so therefore, stating. right, so therefore, state the reality. Now the reason Jews don't want to do that to a large extent is because they feel that that recognition will break down Jewish unity. So we want to sit there and say we're one nation and we're one religion and rabbi is a rabbi and basically we want to maintain unity based upon a total lack of reality or a lack of... But then if you really understood the, tr the, the real issues then you sit there and say listen there are disagreements and then you have to figure out how, you, how you're going to deal with those disagreements within, within, because we are one nation who has, who has different theological groupings within our nation but then you have to work that out. And, and the, the point is, though, is what it really comes down to is, what's the nature of the group? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is, is that the group is, is, has some combination of nation and religion, which usually is not, uh, is so not would addressed. would you say reform and 
our group as well with you. No, reform and reform Judaism, reform Judaism, or reform Jews are a certain group within the greater group of Jews. Okay. Okay. They are the people who accept a certain theology. You see, the way I understand the halacha is like this, and I'll, I'll sort of end with my own perspective. This is the halachic understanding of what I think of Jewish identity. Then you have to see how this fits in colloquially, in terms of the general understanding. Halakha believed in a universal religion. Judaism was not the religion of the Jews. It was the Jewish religion in a certain way, but it was a religion that was that is actually universal. The expectation of God is that all human beings should believe in this one religion. There's one religion. What is a religion? The religion is the expression of the truth. People should believe in the truth. Black belief is a God who spoke on Sinai and so forth. This is what Orthodox Judaism believes. What Orthodox Judaism then did, which causes a tremendous amount of issues philosophically, is it made a distinction between nations, specifically the Jewish nation and other nations. It said that the Jewish nation within this belief system has additional commandments than the universal commandments of the Noahide Code. But the perception is, is that all human beings should believe in universal Judaism, if I use that term, the universal theology. And then, if you're a believer in the universal theology, there's a distinction in your commandments on whether you're a member of the Jewish nation or not. Jews have this, these commandments. Non-Jews have less commandments, have only seven commandments. That's the distinction. The, the point is, though, is it starts with the universal religion. And for them to learn the Torah, is that applicable or it's not even... You know something, in terms of any detail, we're not going to deal with the detail here. Non-Jews are expected to believe in their religion and to follow the commandments they have to follow. So they have to know those commandments. Right? Okay? Now, the point but is... We have ten commandments, but that broadens into... Well, they have seven commandments. They have seven, we have six, thirteen, but the fact of the matter is... Six, thirteen is seven. But, but the point is, is, is that, is that the, the distinction is based upon nation. What happens when you ask the question, are you a member of the Jewish group? You are asking a national question within the religion. The religion makes a distinction between the Jewish nation and, all, and other nations. If you're a member of the Jewish nation, you have these obligations. If you're, not, if you're a member of other nations, you have the seven, seven Noahide laws. That's the way it works. That's the distinction. Now, now comes two issues. If a person wishes to become a Jew, what is that person really saying? A person is actually making a national statement person is really saying not a change in religion the word conversion is really not the word that should be used it's basically saying that, that as a believer in the universal theology which we call Judaism right this person wishes to abide by wishes to become part of the Jewish nation and have those laws okay that's what you're really talking about in terms of Geras it's a person saying, I want to be part of the Jewish nation, abide by those laws. Now, to, in order to do that, he has to, to, he has, he has to first of all say, I accept the universal theology, mm -hmm. which he then has to do anyways, because he's under the seven or five laws anyways. Okay, so he accepts the universal theology. And then, he sits there and says, and I will abide by the, the laws of, the Jew, of being a member of the Jewish nation. Great. That's, that's great. Now, that explains what Gairus really is. It's a change in national identity based upon the universal theology. Okay? So a non-Jew who shares the universal theology, most non-Jews, when they, when, when they want to be Megayar, already believe in Judaism. They accept the universal theology. I mean, most, and then they sit there and say, I want to become a part of the Jewish nation. 
Okay, which because it and it has different obligations. Now, what happens when you say you're born to a Jewish mother? It means you remember the Jewish nation. What does that mean halachically? It means you have obligations as a member of that Jewish nation to follow mitzvahs, to follow the 613 mitzvah. Now, the question then arises: What about a person who theologically stops believing in the universal religion? Well, he doesn't change his national identity, he's still Jewish. But what most people don't recognize is, is that a Jew who doesn't accept the religion, the, 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 the basic religious beliefs, they can actually see the Ramam's language in it when he presents the 13, the 13 uh, principles of faith. When he says about a, a Jew who doesn't accept the 13 principles of faith, it's very, very, very hard and difficult. He basically says that person loses, loses his rights as a member of the Jewish nation. He basically says, listen, he's a Jew not in good standing. It's like a person who doesn't follow the law. The Jewish nation has a law, and the fact of the matter is, is that this law is based upon the universal theology. If you then, then drop the universal theology, you are no longer you're a member of the you're still a member of the nation, but you're not a member of the nation in good standing. Now the truth is, is is that then a lot of then the Ramam himself says that there's a limitation on on on, on what's saying you're not in good standing, based upon how much responsibility you have for not having the correct theology. So he develops the concept of Tanisha Nishba. He basically, and that's where it really develops that nowadays, and, 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 and the Chazanish has arguments like this, that nowadays, to really define as a Jew not in good standing, doesn't really apply without, without actual mitzvot, without actual miracles. So, so a person who, 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 who rejects the theology... It, uh, it does not apply without having miracles happen. Without, without having some really strong proof for the theology. If a person, in other words, in other words, when a person, we 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 don't look upon a Jew who's who doesn't abide by mitzvot in the, in in the negative way that the Rambam defines him, because the Rambam himself argues that that's only if you really are responsible for having these incorrect beliefs. But the fact of the matter what is, what do you mean by responsible? Respons he had really strong proofs. If you had Maimon Har Sinai and turned around and said, I'm not following a mitzvah. Well, that's what happened. Right. Well, well, the point is, is that... Which that, is shocking. Which, right, which is extremely shocking. That, but the truth of the matter is, is that it's a famous statement from the, from, from the Rosh. Rosh basically points out something about about a person with X. He says, you think a person's killed because he's Machal Shabbos? A person's not killed because of Machal Shabbos. A person's not killed if he if he... For, for any any avera he really does when you have a a, a, a death penalty for the avera, he says why? Is, what do you need to do in order to to be to, to be killed in, in according to according to halacha? You have to have two eyewitnesses. The two eyewitnesses have to warn you, and you have to respond by saying you have to give you have to give a response. I know, but I'm still going to do it. Right? I don't care. But the person has to say, I know. You still should kill them for that. Like, no, no, wait a second, wait a second. So wait a second, he says, so he says, wait a second. Person says, okay, it, it's us or to, to, you shouldn't do that. God said don't do Why it. Why not confine them? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The person responds, yeah, there's, a fur there's further stuff. issues, but let's understand the dra what the essence of the gravity of the event is. Now there might be other psychological issues and so forth and so forth. I'm not getting into, into, uh, into argument. That yes, that's that for sure is considered. But what I'm saying, trying to say, you understand it. What the Rosh is trying to say is like this: If you think the person's only being punished for being Machal Shabbos, or or, or 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 let's say a person is punished for like if someone goes up to you, oh go shoot me. You know, no, I don't no, care. no, no, wait, I don't even no, no, care. wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It? That's not the point. That's not what he says. Okay. Wait a second. A person says, if you think the person just wants to be Machal Shabbos and he's being punished because he's Machal Shabbos, he turns a light on on Shabbos, 
if he wanted to do that just for his own pleasure, just let him keep his mouth shut. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you if you if you were about to go in and have some kind of uh, sexual liaison with someone who's who's forbidden to you with a penalty of death. Okay? Okay, <laughs> and, and you're overtaken <laughs> by it. So the Roche points out if the person was just motivated by by his drives, just keep his mouth shut. You want to go sleep with this married woman, okay? And and, and, and you, you you can easily avoid the death penalty, right? Two white witnesses have to warn you. You have to sit well, there. There should be some penalty. No, wait a sec. Wait a sec. No, no. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. There, you're jumping ahead. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, the, what what the concept is. Look here. The Rosh is saying, listen. Do you think the person is being punished because he has his desire to sleep with this woman? Okay, and he's overtaken by his by his sexual drive. He sits and says, "Listen, all he has to do is keep his mouth shut, and he won't get killed. Why? Because in order to be killed in the Jewish court, you have to have two white witnesses saying you can't do it. But if he's and a wait a sec, wait a sec, sec, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Then let him keep his mouth shut. But he can't because he's a no. Wait, no, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. No, that's not. What does he have to say? Like." What is, no, wait a sec. You know, no, no, wait a sec. Like no, no, you're jumping ahead. Okay. You're jumping ahead. You just do whatever he wants to do. The point of the matter is, is that he has two eyewitnesses saying, if you do that, you'll get killed. And, and if he just wants to keep his mouth shut, what does he have to say? He says, I know God told me not to do that, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay? No, so he has to make that statement. Let's say he does. Okay, so then... So what? What kind? What, what, now you want to say the guy's crazy? Yeah, then he'll get off on that. I'm being crazy. Let's say he's not crazy. He just really what wants to say that. You know, he Why? can't tell. Why? Him Why? So I don't Why? Know, uh, so, so the roach. For whatever reason. The to come you're up jump, with a reason. You're but jumping up, but you're jumping to some psychological. Still. The point of the matter is, is if you think he's being punished because of this event, that's not why he's punished. The ultimate punishment of death is, be is because the person basically said, I don't care what God said to me. I'm giving God the finger. Okay? That's basically what he's saying. And he says, the even, that, even that, like. Okay, so oh, now you're getting into you other issues. Then you're getting into other issues. But the fact know. of the matter is, then you get into other issues. I mean, a human and, can't and that's I'll kill you for saying that in front of my face. But like um, we're saying, uh, so now, greater moral consciousness. Oh, okay, so now, now, human now you're raising other issues. You're raising other issues, but that's that's, that's why I'm, but, but, it has but, to be raised because no, 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 no not at this point in time. Moral. No, no, it, it, it has to be raised in other issues. And and the fact of the matter is, then it gets into the nature of God and 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 God's yeah. law and, and so forth and so forth. And that gets into the issue of why the person knows it and why you need miracles or something. Like that. But the point of the matter is, is is that the starting point is the recognition that the person is basically making a statement about God and God's authority. That changes. Now, the truth of the matter is, in our world today, where we don't have miracles, we really don't understand God, then the whole issue becomes... And then, right. and, then and also, furthermore, with the issue of God's authority is also problematic because we don't have that anymore. It doesn't help, but, though. No, but but How but, the, do but you're raising other but you're raising other questions. Person. You're raising other questions. The okay. point is, is what the but Roche is basically be, saying. You know. Yes, but the fact is, is first start with the starting point. The Roche is saying that this understand is. Understand that. Understand okay, that. Okay. Okay. So the point now is. I wanna now, see the next now point. no, no. Wait a sec, because yeah, I'm going. I brought this up okay. with with an issue about about the, in our world today with all the other issues. The point is, is people today don't have that recognition of God's authority. How many people who are who who do not abide by Shabbos or do not abide by Jewish law sit there and say, I know God told me to do this, but I'm not going to do it even though God told me. How many people actually sit there and when they go into McDonald's sit there and say, Yeah, I know God told me not to eat this Big Mac, but I'm going to do it. And even if they say, Yeah, well, I think I've seen that. <laughs> no, no. Because I've known, I grew up. Yeah, with but no, no. But even those, even those people, like even that. those people that like really they felt like kind of guilty, but then they're like, I no, 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 no. I didn't actually feel guilty. The fact is, they may feel guilty, but do they really believe God told them not to do it? They really believe. Listen, God told you not to do it. If they God don't understand can, it all. No, they did not. That's the point. Yeah, like they that's the point. It's possible. Right. That's exactly the point. 
In other words, if, if, if God came down right now and said, jump, okay, <laughs> your question would be, how high? It's important to understand that there's a universal group. The religion is universal, right? The religion makes a distinction between nations. It says that this nation has different rules than other nations, different laws than other nations. And, and this is from a halakhic perspective. And, right, um, a person who wishes to become part of this nation has to first, to, in order to be accepted, like the nation basically is built upon the universal theological constitution. person has to accept the universal theology and then says, I want to switch groups. I want to become part of this nation. So it's really a movement. It's not really conversion. It's not really correct because it's not really a movement from religion. It's a movement of nation. You really believe in the universal religion. I want to become part of this nation that has these these further rules and different things, and I want to be part of that nation. So then, on the other hand, on the other won't hand, be part of their Jewish nation. No, 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 no. If you're still born, part of the uh, nation, yes, you're still but then part they of the nation. Can be a part of another nation. No, they, they no, they be. can't. A Jew, Just, can, a Jew cannot be part it, of another it's, nation. It's like saying the guy who's Canadian 100 percent and American. That doesn't work in halacha. If you're part of the Jewish nation, not part of another nation. Even if he's fully immersed in it. Yeah, because it's not defined by that. It's defined by national identity. You know, if a person is not, is that has no no context, if you if you like I pointed out, a person who's born in uh, Switzerland, right, and runs up the American flag and 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 sings Yankee Doodle every morning and and talks with and learns how to talk with a New England accent, he's not an American. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's definitions of being part of a nation. The fact of the matter is, is a Jew who's born to a Jewish mother is part of the nation. What does that mean? It means as part of that nation that he has obligations under the universal theolo theology to abide by certain commandments. And the truth is, is, is that if a person doesn't have, a person changes his theology, like that, like that cardinal in, in Paris, yes, he's still a Jew. He's a Jew who doesn't believe in the universal in the in the universal, uh, universal in the universal theology that is the basis of the of the Jewish national identity. I now, mean, where's he his standing? He feels his nation then became this no no other no, thing no, that no 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 he not has an actual no it's, that's it's his not. religion. It's his religion. His religion. You use the term. He's, he was French. It was his nation. It was religion. But the truth of the matter is, we see him still as a Jew. What kind of standing is as a Jew? He has, he has a standing where he's, he's, he doesn't have the most negative, uh, the, the ultimate negative standing of a Jew, not in good standing fully, but in certain ways his, his identity within the nation is limited because his opinions are limited. Okay? When we, when we say Jews for Jesus are, you know, are outside of the nation, we sit there and say, listen, what we're saying is you're Jews, you're part of the nation, but your position is not accepted within the develop the, within our Jewish national our Jewish national structure. We're making a statement on our Jewish national structure. Our Jewish national structure does not accept your 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 ideas, because there's a because our Jewish national structure is from a halachic perspective very simple because our new Jewish national structure. The beliefs within what within about the group. other religious groups within religious groups, are they different religions? What do you What do you mean? Reform. Not reform, not conservative. But I'm saying there's Hasidic groups, and that, that are gets that's from that gets modern Orthodox. Yeah, so that that gets into different definitions of the difference. There, there, there's differences. So are they considered different religions in their regard, or are there? Well, that gets into an interesting aspect that within our national identity, we have a certain, from a halachic perspective, we have a concept of a certain level of, of, um, of spectrum that's accepted within our religious identity. Now, it's within the nat within the religious identity of the nation. Now, w the point is, is you're asking within the nation, we have disagreements on the universal religious perspective. Mm -hmm. From a halakhic perspective, there's a certain spectrum of no, acceptable... Halakhic, there's different right. halakhic perspectives. Right. Uh, but, but then we get colloquially, 
within the national identity, what happens is when you start getting colloquial, it becomes much more difficult because you're not talking about halachic. I, uh, what, I, what I was trying to do here is give a halachic definition, and then you have to go further in terms of working it out colloquially. But the halachic definition itself struggled with the national identity and the theological identity. And the halachic answer is, is the theological identity is actually universal. You're not Jewish because of, you, of what you believe, because every human being is supposed to have the same belief. Okay, I and a Noahide basically have the same have the, have the same beliefs. What's our distinction? Our distinction is in terms of of the obligations I have because I'm a member of the Jewish national J Jewish nation. He's not a member. He doesn't have the same obligations. He has different obligations. Okay, he wants to become Jewish means he wants to become part of my nation. But that's be but I can consider him becoming part of my nation because we share the same universal theology. If you didn't share the same universal theology, then I have problems accepting him into my national identity because my national identity is based upon a common universal theology. Now, Jews who then move away from the universal theology, they're still part of my nation, right? But then how I deal with them? So the truth is their voice in structuring my national identity becomes more challenging certain individuals like that I may want to define as Jews not in good standing but that usually takes a tremendous amount of, of, of evidence that he's making a statement that really denies the religion the Rambam basically says that Jews who basically don't believe in Judaism but, but there's reasons why they don't believe in the universal theology no they're not going to have all the rights of Jews, right? They're, they're not going to be able to have a voice in a lot of national identity issues uh, from a halakhi perspective, but we don't look upon them negatively, okay? And, 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 but then from there, you start seeing how this definition got more more difficult because you have this, this struggle of national identity and religious identity then went beyond halakhic definitions and you had arguments between Reform Judaism in the 1800s that were a religion and nothing to do with national identity and therefore they saw themselves totally as a religion so you only became Jewish by your theological standing okay and if you and, 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 and a person could lose their Jewish identity pursuant to that Reform perspective because by, by saying I'm a different religion now so okay. I would say also that oh, we're a better religion than you but you said originally it's not about uh, wrong or right one. It's just uh, you know something. Religion. When it comes down to religion, okay, when I, you have to make the distinction between every religion is arguing for what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you accept a certain religion, you're accepting the fact that you, that this is what you believe to be the truth of existence. This is reality that person doesn't see reality the same way okay now then comes the the culpability and the view of God in this matter okay I as an Orthodox Jew obviously have certain perspectives I don't see Muhammad the same way as a Muslim sees Muhammad I don't see Jesus the same way as a Christian sees Jesus okay now is that so too with so, conservative reform? So it, yeah, uh, conservative a problem with conservative. So with conservative reform Judaism, we have theological distinctions. Then it becomes my attitude to the individual. I'm not God. I don't evaluate the other individual in terms of his own level of 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 of, of righteousness of what God knows, what I don't know. We disagree. Okay, of course we disagree because. I'm an Orthodox Jew and he's not, but the point is, is is that culpable from God's perspective? I don't know this person's history, I don't know his background, I don't know his psychology. God knows this thing, so the truth of the matter is, is, is that, and I also understand the difficulty of trying to figure out the truth. One of the things about my understanding about the truth is the fact that I understand it's the Phineas Deity, pursuant to my own perspective, which also is colored by the fact that I was brought up Jewish. Right? So the point is, if I'm going to walk around and say, I'm right, and that guy's going to hell, I really find that to be really problematic. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that way I'm... Some I'm, people are brought up that way. 
Yeah, but, uh, in yeah. religious and right. Right. So the fact of the matter is, is, is that God knows what that person's culpability is. The point is, is that person is, from my perspective, I look at the person and seems to be a good person and so forth and so forth. There's no reason for me not to treat him with respect. Okay, that 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 may mean that someone who does something which is abhorrent, I also don't know whether the person is culpable in the eyes of God. The point of the matter is, is I can't tolerate it. A certain level of practical tolerance that I have, mm -hmm. that I have to have to protect my own being. But on the other hand, you know, I can I can reflect that I can. And I think there's a logic basis for this. Is I can sit there and say, listen, you're trying to struggle with, the, with with knowledge of what the truth is. You've come to a different conclusion than mine. Obviously, I think you're wrong, okay, because I believe something else. But on the other hand, there's a certain aspect where, can I live with it? Can I respect the fact that you have your own struggles in coming with this idea? Okay? Can I, or, 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 you know, I don't have to sit there and say, you're going to hell. Which is really what the, what the problem comes down to. So everyone feels I'm right, and you're, and you're, and, and, and I sort of know that you are, you are divinely culpable. You don't know that person struggles. It's a different issue. That's why, that's why, you know, I, I, I understand the struggles of, 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 of thought and ideas and difficulties. The point is, is that, is that I have to deal with them. But at the same point, I'm trying to, you know, the point is to try and understand the structure. Okay? If I talk about, when I sit there and say Reform Rabbi really reflects a different religion than my religion, I'm just saying the truth. Am I saying that Reform Rabbi is going to hell? Chas Hashem. Okay? Am I sitting there and saying, do I disagree with the Reform Rabbi in his theology? Yes. Okay? And then, and then, colloquially, I have to figure out how I'm going to deal with it because well, so the how truth. How do you know your truth is absolute, and you don't always can't be perfect in knowing yeah. that? Yeah, we live uh, with that structure. We live with that, with that, with that issue. Anyone walks around thinking that they're 100 percent right, all, you know. That's why one of the most important statements in any theological world is the Fionnius Dite. You know, you know, everyone quotes. The 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 uh, the uh, Yid Gimli Karim Ani Mamin Bemuna Shalema. I believe with the full honest truth in some in, in this statement. Everyone think, yeah, that's not the Rambam's language. That's the uh, that's the language of the of the person who wrote that piyut, and that piyut has a lot of problems in terms of you actually compare it with the Rambam. Okay, I mean, I I believe with with a hundred percent belief. You have no doubt. Where are you born? Mm -hmm. The starting point of any great skull is the Fionnius deity. Pursuant, I have to make decisions. Pursuant to the weaknesses of my human th thought, this is the decision I reach. Okay? That changes your whole perspective on things. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to accept stupidity. It doesn't mean you're going to treat everyone equally when a person is making a stupid statement. But 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 you better have arguments that show the, that show the problems. On the other hand, you also understand the limitations of what you can prove. You know. You know. I mean. What's your it, idea of uh, like a tzaddik or someone of that level? Like, have you ever met someone you feel uh, was at that level, or you wouldn't? What's really the level? No, because it's. Uh, a level of a person in terms of his his emunah and Hashem, or just uh, I don't know why that person believes it. I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, too many people are involved in this thing of defining themselves based on other people and this. And this. Well, this you is don't a know. concept in in Torah. So, like, what it's concept in Torah? Upon, uh, a, a tzaddik and that's the thing. That's it's based upon behavior. That's based upon him as a model for your behavior. Right. Okay. What you're asking is, is that does that person's level of doubts? See, that's, that's the whole point. Everyone's so, so caught up in this idea of, of you know, like, like to really be a firm person, you have to believe 100 percent. 
which means you got to check your brain at the door. Of course there's doubts. Right? When was the last time you saw a miracle? When was the last time God spoke to you? No, I <laughs> I mean, okay, I have my reasons for why no I believe. This generation I have my happening. okay. I have reasons why I believe Torah Misina. But a lot of those reasons have something to do with my own personal studies, my own personal perspective. For me to go up to someone else and prove it. Okay, do I admire someone? Do, do I think certain people have real strong arguments? Yeah. But do you feel that there were tzaddikim that did these? miraculous things for people or a miracle like you know because it talks about them throughout Torah okay yeah what does that mean even I so mean it, it has a big impact to understand no so yeah, that's why people are talking about things they have it's, no it's idea a big deal. yeah but you know so people when they talk about things like this you know, like I was saying to someone this week about the Akedah some rabbi gets up there and says what would you do if God told you to, to, to sacrifice your son okay and I would sit there and say, that's a ridiculous question. Right? Why? Because what would I do? Okay? If, 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 if I heard a voice... First of all, do we even know that was the case in that way? Let's just, uh, no, 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 no. You see, you're already challenging the issue. Take it as is. And the guy's coming up there and saying, what would you do if God told you? Well, let me understand. If God told me to go sacrifice my son, I think the first thing I'd do is call a psychiatrist. Because I never spoke to God. <laughs> Okay? Or an angel. What's or the story? The story is, is an individual who's, who was spoken to by God numerous times and had experiences with divine connections crazy. And, had, and had miracles. No, no, wait a second. Who lived in a world of miracles. Mm -hmm. According to Majushim, that had angels walking in his camp. Who had, who had a connection with God spoke to God, argued with God. Sounds like fairy okay. no, 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 that's your problem. The problem is, is you're sitting there and saying, I have a problem with the story. So call it it's a problem with the story, but don't no, call I'm it... No, I'm not saying no, no, a no. problem with the story, I'm just saying that it seems like that of, of a supernatural occurrence. Oh, okay, so final. therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, what you, re what you should be saying is, is that we are talking about an event which I really can't comprehend because you're talking about a reality which I have no connection to but and somehow what we base no 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 their, somehow their, somehow their I'm supposed to derive some lessons from this event even though I really don't understand what they're talking about that's a very different way of approaching it right okay but it seems Hard to chew that. Because, and hard to uh, yes. deal with it. If right. You don't so therefore, understand therefore, what they're doing. Th th and then therefore, I have to learn from therefore, it. when people exactly right. So when people try to learn from it by projecting into it our present reality, when a guy sits and says, "What would you do if God told you to sacrifice your son?" Okay. If you think that's the way you're going to understand the Akeda story, you're totally off. If you start off by saying, "Listen," Let's first understand that this story makes no sense to me, right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I never spoke to God. Okay, God's not not around. I don't see miracles. Okay, I don't understand the context of the story. I don't understand this. I understand that. Now, let me understand that I'm being told a story which I have no concept of the reality of the story because I have. Okay, now. I'm told that there's a lesson in this story for me, given that limitation. Well, now you have the basis of trying to get something from that story. By recognizing that you really don't understand it. So how can you learn from something you can't understand? So, so therefore, you, therefore, therefore you begin to, to try and figure out how to pull out whatever you can from the story. But it's a very different perspective. It's a very different perspective. Okay? Seems like a more realistic perspective. Yeah. But yet. Yeah. Uh, you know the stories like that. You know something. I'll helpful. tell you something. Uh, I, I'm gonna and, and, and it's getting late and I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You <laughs> could stay. No. <laughs> no. We're we're we're. I'm I'm, okay, I'm right, But give me give me. Uh, okay. Let me let me. Uh, we're first name two. Okay. Let me let me just finish up with this. Something always bothered me. Okay. Okay. And I think I mentioned this in the class before. It's a very simple, re simple issue. 
the Jews got out of Egypt, the most powerful nation in the world, right? Um, they got out by smashing the nation. And the world knew what happened in Egypt. And not only that, there's statements that what happened in Maimon Sinai was broadcast around the world and so forth and so forth. Jews basically go through the desert for 40 years. They got manna coming down from, or manna not coming down from, but they basically survive on this remarkable, well, there's a, 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 a cloud that surrounds them as they're walking through the desert, which turns into a flame at night, leading their way. They got they got they got light at night also, but it's flame. And it keeps they, the grounds they, new. And and, and 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 not only that, they, they, their food is provided for them every morning. They got a a well that's following them around this, moving along, following them along this this desert for 40 years. Okay. Forty years this is happening. They come to the border of 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 Israel, and Yehoshua sends out a warning to the people. Listen, we're coming in to conquer your nation. So that's what God wants us to do. Okay? And um, you have a choice. You can get out, pack it, you can um, agree to follow the Noahide Code, right? Will be good Noahides as we take over your, your country, or we're going to wipe you out. Okay. Now, what what do the nations do? Now, the the spies from from Yeshua go in and they they see Rachav, and Rachav says, "We know what happened." Rachav says, "We know about the, the miracles. We know about how you got through the desert. So how you wiped out Og and, and, and uh, Og and Sichon and." You're totally wiping everyone out, so forth and so forth. God's obviously on your side. We just saw how you split the, the Jordan and just crossed over the river. I mean, like, yeah, we're, we're getting the message of what's happening here. Uh, okay, and that's why Rachel says, listen, when you come in, I'm on your side. Right? Okay. What's bothered me? Like, what were the people thinking? Like, put two and two together. You have all these miracles happening. You have people being wiped out by this by this powerful God. You, you have this nation surviving through miracles. You think you're going to take them on? You think that these walls of Jericho are going to protect you? Same what are you know, crazy? They should know about this what nation by now. They yeah, what, are they crazy? Who's bothering me? Like, like they were given a choice: pack it or follow the Noahide code, right? Because you know, if you don't do that, the other alternative is you're dead. So what is bothering me? So then I saw in the Rambam, the Rambam brings down different cases where a Kaddish Baruch Hu took away Bechira. Okay, the most famous case where God took away Bechira is Paro. But then the Rambam says another case. The nations in Israel, yeah. right, before they, before, before they were conquered. I said, oh, now I understand. Kaddish Baruch Hu took away their Bechira. God wanted them wiped out for, for whatever reason. Okay, now I can understand the story. The that doesn't sound great. Well, well, no, no, but, but the point is, <laughs> is, is that, is that that's, a, that's the Roman's answer. So I'm sitting there saying, reading the Roman, and said, okay, so the Roman saw the problem. We got the answer. So he presents this answer. The point is, is, is that that completely changes the story. Yeah. When people when people start talking, we have to wipe out the 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 the, the, the Arabs today in Israel. No, wait a second. Yoshua had that that had that had that command in very different circumstances, right? But the Arabs want to do the same thing to us. That's Show something us different. That's, or, that's well, something different. Their, reli what their religion is us. not what I'm concerned they about. I'm not I'm not concerned about. Leave. That's not true. The fact of the matter is, they're very much interested in ever becoming Muslim. They would be very Even happy. Jewish people. Absolutely. That's what they so did it's when the they were. the same thing. No, wait a second. Well, uh, that's their religion. Okay, fine. The fact of the matter the is. Same, no, no, the, the same fact. Idea. No, no, we no. We, what's the big difference? When did Yeshua give that edict? When there was God miraculously in the world. The point. The, the point is, is that people take these statements. They apply it in this world. Different. In this world today, right? It's a different world. You think we have we, we we would do the same? Yeah, does that make it more right? Th that's a different issue of why of why in that world of miracles, 
Because the people in that world of miracles, if they're not following God when they're seeing miraculously the hand of God, then you still wonder about it. I mean, like, you know, I, the story of the example is crazy. There's a, there's a clear miracle on Har Carmel. Eliel is there. Everyone sits there. Shem Elohim. Achav is there. He goes home. He tells he tells Jezebel, he's evil. Um, this is what happened at the mountain. Um, it was God, and it was a clear miracle. And Elio wiped out all the Nevi'ah Habal. Right? Okay, sounds good. So what does what, what does these evil do? Zevil gets a messenger, writes a note, and sends it off to Eliyahu. Tomorrow you're going to be in the same place you put my my my, my priest today. Hey, lady, did you not get the message? Your own husband just came back, told you what everyone saw over there, that these that these prophets were, were these priests, whatever prophets were totally were priests were totally wiped out. It was clear cut a miracle. And, and you're sitting there and saying to the guy who did this, who brought the fire down from heaven and, and all these things that wiped out all these priests, that you're going to take care of him? What are you, crazy? You know, like, the, uh, so, and what happens? I think he packs it to Yehuda. I, 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 I mean, you're reading these stories and, and, and like, so what I'm saying is, is, is that people want to jump in and try to understand. You have to understand it. You want to understand it? First of all, understand what you don't understand. Then you can build up what you can understand and try and take the message. But when you try and take the message by saying, from my world perspective, I'm applying it to that world, you're going to miss the whole, the whole message.